doing the intro uh, for this video out here because um, Sophie, the man that I'm about to talk to you guys about, is a little anxious, a little upset. Um, she's just arrived in training. Um, a big part of her being here is about calming down and learning to be comfortable in, you know, in the company of a human. Um, you know, learning that people are actually something that can be trusted and not something negative. Um, she's a Welsh mare, um, she's sensitive anyway, and then on top of that she's um, lived a relatively sheltered life. She was bought as a <coughs> weanling and taken to her new home where she never left. Um, she lived there, she's now ten, um, so nine and a half years she's lived in the same place never left so obviously it's a big change her coming to a new place and not being with her owner who obviously has been the one constant throughout her life so um i'm gonna go through some stuff about how you know to work on getting a horse comfortable um and we'll we'll see how far we get the big thing is going to be about giving her the right amount of release um and not putting too much pressure on in the first place that's going to cause too much upset. Um, she needs to see me as a source of confidence, not a threat, not something that's fearful. You know, she's going to be in flight mode anyway, I can almost guarantee it. When we loaded them, uh, when we loaded her to get her here, she, you know, she reared at the side of the trailer, you know, and I don't mean bunny hopped, I mean vertical, you know, big rears. Um, so that sort of defense mechanism is well established. Um, so we might get some of that, I hope we don't, but I'm going to do all I can to, to make her comfortable. So I thought I'd introduce her, she's a Welsh mare, 10 years old, um, not done a great deal. She's been sat on once or twice a few years ago, um, but she's not had any real consistency with that. So she's not a riding horse. Um, and she's just here to get more comfortable. Be my rider, then I'll ride her. But I'm going to make sure that we, you know, we kind of work step by step. If we get there, we get there. If we don't, I just want to know that she's going to go home happier um, with life than when she came. You know, when she first came, she she settled strangely quickly, actually, um, in the stable. But then would have the odd moment, just sort of out of the blue, where she would start rearing in the stable and looking like she wanted to come over the door. I mean, she can't because we've got the the grids up. Um, you can just see one in the back corner around here somewhere. Um, it's like the V-shape so they can't jump out. Um, it's obviously for their own protection. But uh, yeah, she was pretty mad just at the slightest little change, you know, when one of our horses walked past or uh, if there was a noise in the distance. As a rule, she's actually quite happy in the stable, but um, it just takes the tiniest little trigger. So obviously when she gets out into the arena now, um, the other horses might come over. She's going to see them in the distance at least. There's a bit of a breeze out today, so some of the trees are going to be moving and stuff. So we might find um, a little bit of anxiety that, that we'll work through. But once I get out there, and I'll get the cameras turned on before I take her out. And then um, I'll get started as soon as. So. I won't be doing the hi guys, welcome to the Good Horsemanship channel bit. Um, so yeah, that's the story. I'm gonna get her out now and I'll see you in the arena in just a minute. Okay, so we're coming in. I set the cameras all up beforehand, so I'm hoping that you can see me okay. Don't know if you can hear the, the snorting that we've got going on here. Just these little things, you know, and she's kind of wanting to lead me around a little. I don't want to be horrible to her, but you know, when a horse is kind of got their adrenaline up like this, and their reaction is to just kind of walk where they feel that they should, somebody gets hurt. So she doesn't even have to back up off the flag right now. I just make a point of saying, look, don't step into me. I, it's a nice idea, you know, that when you get worried, 
you know you come to the person but she's so substantially bigger than I am the last thing that I need is for her to kind of want to climb on top of me and she's got this whole arena you know I don't want her kind of dragging me away but at the same time <clears throat> I also don't want to be stepped on so I let her move her feet you know she obviously wants to move her feet I'm not going to tell her that that's not okay however I just try and keep myself at an angle where I'm I'm safe that's why I keep this right arm up in the air because if I if I leave that she's coming straight at me with that shoulder you know and I kind of I need her to be comfortable but there's a big difference between a horse being comfortable and a horse being safe you know you see I try not to pull on her here when she pulls back like that I let that rope slide through could slide through the hand good and again see she's kind of learnt that rearing thing that's become a bit of a bit of a habit like that one was at me then so I might just drive not hard you know I don't she's anxious that's where this behavior is coming from to a degree so the last thing I want to do is create more anxiety good you know the pressure that I'm putting on here is making her move it's just not necessarily in the way that I want don't walk into me though she um, I've known her for about three days you know there was the day that we went to pick her up um, I was just working she would she'd been out in the field and she was covered in mud um, and I, I was worried she was gonna get sore um, so yesterday was spent just trying to groom her and get the mud off her um, obviously you can imagine she's a lot more comfortable in the stable but there's still bits of this going on um, good girl and then obviously today we're we're coming out and getting this first session in because she's here for um, four weeks but it's really important that we have her, her physical assessment done so we know that she's not doing any of this behavior because she's hurting um, and obviously while she's acting like this there's no way I'm gonna let my wife near her and risk her getting hurt so <clears throat> so I keep my energy really low here you know I don't want her to be um, you know sort of triggered by anything that I do and I don't get emotionally involved when she shows those behaviors so <clears throat> I'm talking a lot here I need to kind of give her a little more to focus on see she's still pushing on me a lot with that shoulder we're gonna get to that in a minute the things I need to look at here is starting to move her body around to give her some direction some purpose okay and, and that's gonna be really important for her because she needs a direction and purpose um, so that's kind of where I'm gonna go you know if you've seen any of the other videos on the horsemanship channel you know um, about the whole taking the hind end taking the front end um, exercise on the ground well that's where we're gonna start here so I'll talk it through as I'm going but <clears throat> let's uh, let's see where we where we get so initially I go ahead and ask those hinds to move block her if she tries to come in at me with that shoulder try and leave the head alone you know when a horse gets anxious it's really common that people grab a hold of their head so you see she wants to run that's okay I just I say you don't have to not run you can run but you're gonna have to run in this kind of um, direction and that's gonna be a lot harder for you however you can't just rear and change direction when you feel like it I'm afraid that's not gonna work <clears throat> still keep my energy low and there would be a lot of people you know obviously this video is gone out to the public there would be a lot of people saying oh that horse needs to be told now 
this isn't a horse that's naughty this is a horse that's anxious part of that is her breeding good part of it is just you know she's not had a lot of exposure to new places and what have you that's fine we're going to back up now now with the back up i just wait until i find some relaxation through the neck there that was tiny but it was there i'm going to look at that again seeing if i can get that neck to drop good it might only be tiny but she gets some praise for it and again i'm looking at that sternomandibular muscle that small that small that big muscle make, making a small change i don't put a great deal of pressure on here that's important they're good one thing i meant to say earlier is she bites too I suspect some of that comes from being treated out of the hand. Um, that might be where the behaviour was learnt, but then she uses it as a as a get out. Um, I noticed it whenever um, we were doing a couple of bits, you know, with the loading and stuff. Uh, she reared, but occasionally she would attempt to bite. With the vertical flexion like this, normally, you know, I'm going to go ahead and look at getting the lateral bend first but I don't really want to find myself around that side of her body because I wouldn't put a cow kick in past her right now so the kind of most important thing when you're doing anything with a horse that's like this is you have to keep yourself safe if you keep yourself safe you can keep her safe you know you imagine if I turned her loose in here you know the likelihood of her going through a fence is pretty high. See, she's trying to bite my hand there. She doesn't have to back there. Good. She doesn't have to back up a whole load. I just want to see that every time she feels that pressure on her head. Good. That was nice. That she starts to relax. That's the first time she's looked to me. Yeah, that's the first time she's looked to me for any support. That's a really good change. So, we're going to go move back out onto that circle. I invite it. Nothing happens because she's not paying the attention. Good. Slight reinforcement. She finds the walk. I don't need her to walk hours and hours and hours of circles here. Let's find that relaxation. Good. I don't need her to repeat that process 500 times to show that she's understood it. I just need... I'm rewarding the quality over the quantity. Okay, if she walks half a circle when every other time she was trying to trot and canter that circle, she gets that time. I love that she followed the hand that time. Horses like her, you know, they're very, they're very sensitive. It doesn't take a long time for them to learn the correct answer, but it also doesn't take them very long to learn the incorrect answer. Move back out. Good. See that trot's still there, but it's a lot less extreme than it was before. So I'm not rewarding this by totally stopping but I do keep letting her stop. Good, there's a walk. We stop, but then we're gonna relax that neck. Good, okay. Take that and praise her. It's really important that you praise them. And you know, if you've watched a lot of my videos, you know, you'll see that I don't like to wear gloves too often. I will in extreme cold because I might not be able to handle that lead rope properly if my fingers are numb. Done? Might not be able to handle that lead rope properly if my fingers are numb. However, <coughs> as a rule, when it comes to praising the horse, your actual touch is going to be so much more effective than uh, a glove. <coughs> Good, 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 good. No, I'm saying good then because there she starts to slow down to the flag rather than run from the flag. Let's go ahead and get that stick up on her now. It that isn't the the actual flag. I don't suspect is too big of an issue. You know, once we can get to looking at that honor, 
I don't think she's going to actually be that concerned about it. Um, <coughs> let's start with the stick. <coughs> kind of have so many things to do and when a horse gets this troubled, you kind of don't know where to start because there's so many things that need doing, you know? I don't think she's ever had a hard time in her life. You know, I don't think anybody's ever done anything with a stick and that's why she's anxious. I may be wrong, but I know her owner pretty well and I don't think she would ever do anything horrible to her. Uh, I think it's just lack of understanding with this. That's it. She gets the praise from the stick, but then my hand comes in. You see, I use the back of my hand when she's anxious. That doesn't matter too much if she's relaxing where my, what part of my hand I use, but I use the back of my hand if a horse is anxious because that's so much less threatening. You might be thinking, well, the horse doesn't even know. Her eyes are on the side of her head, not on the front like ours. So she can see my hand back there. And if it's kind of like this, like a talon, that's going to be a heck of a lot more threatening to her. You're okay. Now, I'm going to be a little sneaky because it's going to save us a lot of time and a lot of upset. I'm going to let her take a smell of this flag. Now, I think she would run from that flag if I held it up to her. She would run for the sake of running. Not because she really knew why she was running, but just because she thought she should. Whereas I'm pretty confident that if I go and sneak it up there, she might take a look at it. That's good. And I praise her. The first thing I want a horse to learn, sometimes, you know, there I was using this flag in self-defense. I'm going to roll the flag up now, you see? So it's smaller, you know, to her, and then take it away, bring it back. Take it away, bring it back. Again, you know, one thing I talk about an awful lot is that I don't like to desensitize a horse. You know, I don't want her dull to this because I'm still going to move her with it. That's a good girl. I'm still going to be moving her with it a lot. However, it's about context. You know, if, a, if you open your kitchen drawer and it's full of knives, you're not going to run screaming out of the house. But if you're walking down a dark alley and you saw a, a knife in the air, in the arms of a person running towards you like this, you might run. Context. It's not the knife that's scary, it's the context in which it's used. And that's kind of how a flag is going to be to a horse. And how a whip would be, you know? So many horses are frightened to death of whips. You know, whips themselves. The actual term whip, you don't think of that as something that's a training tool. You think of that as something that whips things. You know, you think of... Uh, <clears throat> You might think of Indiana Jones swinging somewhere, but you also might think of somebody being lashed with a whip. This is good. She's accepting that flag a little nicer. I'm going to start trying to build some distance between us now for the rest. You know, I give her that time, and I'm a lot further away. I want her to realize that it's okay to be that further away, but the flag's going to keep coming back. It always starts on the wither. Okay, I can come back at her with the back of my hand, the flag's always going to be around the wither, the area in which her mum would have groomed her when she was a baby. The horse is going to feel kind of... The affection's going to mean a lot more. You see horses grooming each other in the field, they normally grooming each other around the wither. I want her to realise that when she does something good and when she starts to relax, I'm going to come up here, or that flag is going to come up and groom her here in that spot where other horses do it as a sign of affection. That's really important. So I might go ahead and ask her to take her hind feet around now. Use the flag to move her away, then quit, but don't walk in. Good job. So what am I going to do? I'll leave the flag alone. I'll rub her with the back of the hand, then the front of the hand, just to show her that that's not offensive in any way. Then that flag's going to come up here, rub on her with her. If she needs to move, that's okay. You know, I think good horsemanship is about setting up a situation letting the horse figure it out. See here, she stands still, she gets her scratch, then it goes away. I'm not here to try and bully her into being calm. You know, that's nice. I don't need to bully her into being calm. I want her to learn to be calm because she realizes it's much better for her health, <laughs> for her mental health, you know? I think being a, 
a horseman that works with troubled horses is just like being a mental health counsellor with troubled kids. Just <coughs> a little different species, but it's the same kind of thing. If a child went into some kind of mental health clinic and some grown-up started shouting at them, you need to sort your life out, you need to sort yourself out, that child is going to come away demoralised, they're going to come away feeling broken and beaten down, and the likelihood of them doing everything that was told to them is very, very slim. They're more likely to rebel against that. And that's just the same with horses. Let's go ahead and move that height. Good job. You did good. You want to have a look at that? Whoa. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> okay, let's see if we can find a circle now. I open and invite the hand. My body language, everything points in that direction. The flag will reinforce if I need it to, but I do my best not to make it. That's a nice walk. I drive that hind around. I use the word drive. My connotation of drive doesn't necessarily have to involve really flapping, kicking, biting, and yee to get her around. You know, sometimes a drive is just the energy in my body moving. We've got another horse moving around now in the field. That's why she's got a little bothered there. So I just gently ask her to back up with the flag. You can figure it out. And I know there's a distraction here. But you can figure it out. There it is. <clears throat> so I'm pretty sure she's seen another horse move before. So I'm not going to be massively um, sympathetic that she can sort of walk on top of me again because this happened. I'm not moving, Gailey. You're going to have to figure this out. <clears throat> All I need is that little step back. It doesn't have to be in. That'll do it. But don't then walk forward three steps. <clears throat> there it is. But then you walk forward again. There it is. And there, that time, look, she didn't walk forward. That was my fault for being late with my timing. I needed to get in there and rub her that time. There, good. If she doesn't walk forward, I go to her. You know, I say, look, that distance, and there, look, she comes back to me. That's exactly what I need. I'm going to test it now. If I was to walk over here, does she come with me? Yes, she does. If I was to walk over here, does she come with me? What about over here? What about over here? You know, at the beginning, she was taking me in a different direction. You know, in the beginning, whatever direction I went in, didn't matter to her. She wanted to head up towards where you guys are, towards where the camera is. Still a little on top of me, but I'm I can cope with that because we've got buttons now. You know what that flag means. Doesn't mean rear. You can try rearing if you think it'll help you, but that's the one where you back up those couple of steps because that brings you this. It brings you that affection. It brings you that praise. Let's go ahead and walk around. Let's quit. Let's back up. Hey, hey. Now we're starting to get a little bit of awareness about where my feet are and what they mean. Can I use my feet now to step into her? Good. No. Don't block me. Don't block me. That's what the flag is. The flag is the extension of my own arm. See, that time my arm wasn't going to be long enough. It wasn't going to be effective enough to get her to be still to get her to be still, to get her to stop trying to block me with her head. Let's take it around. There again, look, the flag comes up to do what my arm couldn't. There's the step across. She gets the praise. <clears throat> okay, let's talk about that neck again. That's coming quicker, well done, that was nice. job. I love how that head's starting to lower. We're getting a lot of licking and chewing going on down here. I don't know how much of that you can see, but that's pretty nice. Okay, we're going to start to dance a little. So I invite the circle. I don't need you stepping on me though. Good girl. I'm going to take those hinds, but then immediately we're going to change and take the fronts in the opposite direction. Good job. 
Now, I reckon she's far enough along now that we can figure out the walk. If I bring my energy right down, keep the arm directing, she's going to start to work out that the trot isn't helping her. There she finds the answer. So I take those hinds. Nope. Yep. And then invite the front end to step across. Good. That's not looking all flashy yet. You know, she's not taking that really big, nice reaching step that I like. We talk about that in other videos. However, she's starting to get a rough idea of the direction. That was good. <clears throat> Do you think she should trot? That's okay. She's going to figure it out. Because my body language is saying walk. And that's something that I could try and teach her. So we'll be walking along. My life's going to come up here. You see, my walk is quicker, I hold my shoulders higher. Everything comes up. Can she figure out the big change now? I'm gonna quit altogether. I didn't have to drive a hind end away to get her to come and stop here. That was good. You know, that wasn't necessary. What was necessary, good girl, was that she acknowledged that the life disappeared in my body and hers could do the same. See, she's starting now to find some peace, being at a distance, and I can step into her to give her the praise. That's a real big change. That's good. Let's take your front end that way. That's the wrong way. So she finds the flag. Flag drives a little. Good, until that front end moves out. That was good. We're going to start coming over her head now. She might feel a little more threatened by that. But I don't know if we're going to get to the riding. But if we are, <laughs> if we are, then she's going to have to deal with stuff going on above her. So my energy comes low. I might help her a little this time and take those hinds away. That's better. Okay. I'm going to come over again. I might make it a little less, um, a little less in the air this time. Good. You're going to have to get that front end out. You're going to have to get it out. Good girl. Take that hind. Good. <clears throat> A little quick. The main thing, you know, when you're working with a horse, good. Like her. Every interaction. I mean, actually, this is kind of true for any horse, but any interaction has to finish with lightness. Okay, and or should I say softness? So softness to me is not about getting a horse to good girl to where they shape up. You know that, and it is to a lot of people. You know, to a lot of people, softness is about the shape. You know, you want your horse soft. You want them rounded. But you can bully that. You know, you can bully a horse to being good girl. You can bully a horse into being soft. You can't bully a horse. No, let me start that again. You can bully a horse into being rounded. You can't bully a horse into being soft. I kind of have a, a triangle idea. At the top of the triangle, it's an equilateral triangle, three even sides. The top point of the triangle is softness. If you're going to have softness, you're going to need a little bit of head carriage and a little bit of lightness. Okay. The head carriage is by far the least important. But by having the head carriage correct, I can relax that muscle here in the neck. Okay. I could have her in that shape, but have that head tense. That's what's important here. So I wait. You know, she's kind of sneezing. I like that release of tension. I don't even need her backing up. There's nothing in, in particular I'm doing to ask her to go backwards here. There, this muscle comes floppy and relaxed. That's the only reason for me that the head carriage is relevant. Okay. I do like to show my horses, but... You know, if I, was, if I wasn't going to do very well because my horses didn't have the right head carriage, 
then I wouldn't be that bothered about showing my horses. Um, as it is, you know, head carriage is a byproduct of the full triangle. You know, it's part of the triangle. So I will get the head carriage if I get them soft. Head carriage is important for that one reason, knowing that you can see the change in the muscle. Okay, you don't need to headbutt me though. Don't go anywhere. Good girl, well done. That was real nice. Don't go. Um, the next is the lightness. Now, certainly in the Western world, it's very common to associate the pressure on the mouth or the head with the spur. So what you do in the beginning, or what a lot of people do in the beginning, is they squeeze with the spur and then pick up with the hands and get the horse to shape up. It doesn't really matter how heavy they are in the head because eventually you take away the hands until eventually you spur the horse to get the head to carriage. That's one way of doing it. And those horses look light, but there's a heck of a lot of pressure going on on their sides. So it's not, it's not genuine. The alternative <clears throat> is that you take a light contact. If nothing happens or you don't get it perfect, you bang, bang, bang on the reins until the horse is intimidated into bringing the head down. Again, it's not genuine. It's made through intimidation, so you can never get the horse to be soft. To me, a horse that is soft is a horse that is emotionally soft. Okay, they're mentally and emotionally with you. In order for that to happen, they'll be light, but they won't be light because they're intimidated. In order for that to happen, they might have the good head carriage, but it's so much more than that. You know, I can start to see some softness appearing here. It's miles away <laughs> from where I need it to be, but how she's holding herself now is a lot different to how it was in the beginning. Is she resting the leg at the back? I'm not sure if you can see that, um, if the camera is too high up, but she is resting a, her, her left hind leg there. So that's a big change. Her head carriage is lower and the neck is starting to relax on its own now, which is a huge, huge difference. The She's not rounded right now, but I'm still starting to find some success with that triangle. It's not that you have to have all of these things at the same time. It's just you have to have each one separately before you can work on them together. Um, and having just any one on its own is a paradox. You can't, or at least you can't, and have good horsemanship. You know, if you've got, if you think to yourself, well, I've got really good lightness, and I've got really good head carriage, but my horse is often really distracted and is not with me, then there's something wrong. You know, that lightness must be coming from the wrong place. That's what we've got to think about. You see how much softer she is in her eye there don't know how well you can see her eyes, but that's a huge, huge change. Mentally, emotionally, it's a huge, huge change. And then, you know, I want her to think, these sessions are pretty nice, really. You know, emotionally, she's in a bit of turmoil. And then she gets to come out here and have a nice time. She might have to work through some stuff, but overall, she gets to have a nice time. You don't have to worry about him. There's a horse moving around in the field. And you see, look, I start to come and give her some praise, and she says, oh, can I? <laughs> That's a huge, huge change, you know? And I'm gonna kind of give myself to that too. I'm gonna say, hey, I'm gonna make myself less imposing here, less threatening. You can lick my knee, that's fine. And that's where you really start to make a connection with a horse, you know? That's a Just let her spend a little bit of time here. Don't know if you could hear that, but that's a, another horse that we've got in training who's whinnying to her, and she doesn't even look up. But I want that to be because she's got some affection here. She's got everything that she needs right here, right now. I might not be a source of food to her, but I'm 
damn sure starting to become a source of peace. <clears throat> and to most horses that's actually a little bit more valuable. Because what's the point of having the food if you don't have the peace? That's the way a lot of horses are going to feel. Might offer that to her again. That's good. I do that again too. That's nice. here when I lift this hand does she come to it yes yeah, she does perfect yeah and that just says to me that she's looking for that peace she's looking for that reassurance now and I love that so I might just put that flag down a minute and we're gonna go talk about the lateral flexion now normal circumstances I would work on this first she wasn't normal circumstances. I reach down that rein, take a little bit of contact. She's likely to spin around, that's quite normal in the beginning. Because a horse doesn't want to put themselves into that vulnerable position. She doesn't want to turn her head all the way around because she loses access to the dangers that could come from that direction. There's the give and I praise. I reach down again. This is about the rein coming loose, not the shape. There it is. A lot of horses, a lot of people, sorry, are concerned with the shape. Like that matters. It's not about bending your head around, bending your horse's head around. It's about them creating the looseness in the rope. Pressure on. Give. That rein comes totally loose. <laughs> Do it again. She goes to pull against it and that's okay. She doesn't run into much resistance, but she'll know that I'm still there until she makes the right choice. That's not the right choice. That's not the right choice. That's not the right choice. That is. <clears throat> okay. Go ahead and don't lean on me. I'm not your scratching post. Go ahead and ask that neck to relax. If she starts to push me, she gets no release from it. Put a little bit of pressure on there with the end of my rope just to say that's not going to help you. We've still not got the relaxed feel through that rain. That's better. <clears throat> this time I'm going to go ahead and work on the right side. Slide my hand down that rein. She's going to run into that pressure. There's the answer. Good job. Good girl. I know, you're doing really well. But you can't scratch on me. You've got legs if you want to scratch. Some people, you know, would tell you you should never let a horse scratch on you because it's dominance and it's... And to a degree, you know, that's kind of true. I really don't think it matters that much. I just don't want them scratching on me because I don't want to fall over. Back it up a little. Let's go forward. Let's go back. Let's go forward. Let's go back. Cool. Okay. She's in such a good place now, mentally. I'm not going to ask her to do a great deal more than this. Don't do it. Because I want her to go away now feeling good and think, you know what, tomorrow if I come out and get to feeling like this again, that's going to be a good session. And I want her to kind of see me in the morning, come out to her and think, oh, good, it's him. Not quite, not quite, there it is. Let her stretch. Cool, cool. Okay guys, um, 
This video obviously I filmed with the intention of it going out publicly. You might be watching it on the channel of course, um, but it was also available on Facebook and YouTube. Um, so don't be afraid to comment if you have any questions and I'll answer them as soon as I can. Um, I'll always get back to comments a little quicker on the Facebook page. Alright, see you guys later. I hope you have a great day. Well done.